to the Lord, O oh, sing God a new song, O oh, sing to the Lord, O oh, sing God a new song, O oh, sing to the Lord, O oh, sing God a new song, O oh, sing to our God, O oh, sing to our God, for God is the Lord, and God has done wonders, for God is the Lord, and God has done wonders, for God is the Lord, and God has done wonders, O oh, sing to our God, O oh, sing to our God, for Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia, for Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia, for Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia, oh sing to our God, oh sing to our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. on high Lord I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from Isaiah 55, verses 10 to 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading is from Romans chapter 8 verses 1 to 11. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. 
by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And then he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when the trouble and persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as far as... Uh, but as, far, but as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. My name is Deacon Michelle Collins. I serve as the assistant to the bishop for the Manitoba Northern Ontario Synod, and it's my pleasure to be part of this year's summer sermon series. There's a difference between building something by following the directions correctly and discovering something in the process of creating. Some things need a full and complete set of instructions, assembling a bicycle or fixing a machine, for example. But other things are best created when the directions are set aside and the heart and the imagination of the one creating can be let loose. 
When it comes to understanding what Jesus refers to as the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, many people try to approach it like following a set of instructions. What do I need to do first? Do I need a wrench or a hammer? How will I know if I've built it correctly? We seek to construct the correct way of understanding and articulating how it is that God shows up in the world, what God is up to, and who God's work benefits. But Jesus makes it clear that the kingdom of heaven is not like following assembly instructions. It's more like listening to a story over and over again, each time hearing something different. It's more like the process of planting, where you watch the beauty of creation happen in a way that's largely beyond your understanding. It's more like being in a relationship with someone who gets more and more complex the deeper the relationship goes. It's more like sitting on a hillside listening to a story and realizing that the story isn't really about seeds and soil, but about the abundant potential of life and creation. In our gospel reading today, we read the first of several stories in a chapter that Jesus tells to try to describe or explain the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 13, these parables are all put together in one place, while in other gospels, they're interspersed through other activities and events. But in Matthew's gospel, they're all together in one space. So while we pick up one of them to look at it more closely, it would be for us to wonder what we may discover if we were to look at them all together. Jesus will often begin his teachings with something like, the kingdom of God is like, or the kingdom of heaven is like. But this story, he begins with an invitation to listen, which is already an invitation to imagination. There will be time for questions and analysis later. Start by listening. And he tells them a parable, which was a teaching technique they would have been familiar with, where a teacher tells a story that means something other than what the story is about. So while he tells a story about a farmer scattering seeds, the disciples at least realized that he was really talking about something else. And we know this because they ask him about it later. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to draw clear and concise conclusions about what each part of a parable represents and what exactly Jesus was trying to say. But parables weren't meant to be clear and concise. They were purposely intended to invite the audience into deeper listening and wondering. In Jesus' story about the farmer, the seeds don't get much say in where they land. The image of the sower is one who generously scatters seeds in all directions. It doesn't even look like the sower takes much time to evaluate the likelihood that the seeds that he's sowing will grow. He goes ahead and throws the seed broadly and generously. He must know that seeds don't grow in rocky path. He must know that seeds don't grow in the midst of weeds. But that doesn't stop the farmer from scattering the seed anyway. I can almost hear all the expert farmers in the crowd shooting their hands up and challenging Jesus' story. They would immediately see that the sower should have known better than to scatter the seeds in places he knew wouldn't produce life. But I can just as clearly see Jesus saying, listen, listen. What if there's something else going on in this story? Throughout the gospel accounts, we read various versions of how people respond to Jesus' message. Some rejected the message outright. Some listened for a bit, but when the teaching got challenging or they didn't get what they wanted when they, got, when they wanted it, they left. Even the disciples weren't always particularly receptive to what Jesus was saying. And many of them ran away when being associated with him became risky for them. In fact, many of the disciples had multiple responses to what Jesus was saying, depending on the day and the situation. But Jesus kept teaching them. He kept loving them. He kept inviting them into a deeper listening. He kept scattering the seed of life, of healing, of restoration, hoping that those who heard it would be ready for it to take root and grow in them. And Jesus does the same thing for us. Sometimes we are the rocky path, sometimes the weeds. Every now and then, we're the good soil. Sometimes we're receptive to the word of the kingdom and it takes root in our souls, but then gets choked out by the worries of the world. Sometimes due to pain, tragedy, or trauma, the word of life and hope just can't even find its way in and gets snatched up almost as soon as it lands. But every now and then, the seed takes root. We hear the words of life and forgiveness declared to us, 
and we respond through faith and love for God and for neighbor. But even though we are not always the good soil, Jesus the Word doesn't give up on us. The sower keeps scattering seeds and extending invitations to us to listen, to discover the kingdom that God is bringing about, and to be open to the creative mystery of life and love that has been planted in us. Jesus cautions us not to get caught up in judging ourselves or others for the condition of the heart. That's not what this is about. Receive the gift of life, he seems to be saying. Participate in the mystery of creation. Tend to the environment so that life has the best chance possible to thrive. And keep listening so that when the word of God sneaks up on you, you can detect it. Keep listening so that when the word of God happens to you, you receive it. Rest from the impulse to control and construct the perfect response. You won't always get it right. And a lot of times you won't even really understand what God is doing in your life. But listen, open yourself up to the possibility that there's something deeper, more profound going on within and around you. And let the seed of God's word take root in your life. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray this phrase that we might often rush past, Thy kingdom come. In his explanation of this petition, Martin Luther wrote that the kingdom will come whether or not we pray for it to, but in this, we pray that it comes to us. The kingdom will come whether or not we pray for it to, but in this, we pray that it comes to us. The sower will scatter seeds because that's what the sower does. In this, we pray that the seeds that land in the soil of our lives and in our communities will take root, will grow and will produce rich and abundant fruit and blessing for all. When Jesus talks about the kingdom, he makes it clear that the kingdom is not something we find through our own efforts. We don't work our way into it. We don't pay for it or earn it. The kingdom is a gift, a seed that is planted, a treasure that is discovered. And the gift of the kingdom is for all, those who get it and those who don't. Let anyone with ears listen, Jesus says. Discipleship is the journey of being shaped and transformed by the seed of faith that is planted in us through the grace of God. Growing as a disciple happens as we pray that the kingdom comes to us. The seed takes root and grows in us and through us for the sake of the world. So if you find yourself trying to follow the instructions correctly in an effort to be right with God or to correctly construct the accurate understanding of how God shows up in the world, these parables from Jesus invite you to be released from that pressure. Understanding God's kingdom is less like following a manual of instructions and more like listening to stories or looking through a kaleidoscope. Each time you listen, you hear something new. Each time you turn the kaleidoscope, you see something different. So this week, pick up the story of the sower who generously scatters seed without being preoccupied with the result and look at it again. Turn it to the left and to the right to rearrange the pieces a bit and see what new thing emerges. Shake it up a bit and look again. That's where growth and life happens. The sower will keep sowing seeds. The kingdom will come, whether or not we pray for it to. In this, we pray that it takes root and grows in us. Amen. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everybody about you wherever I go. You will own our life and our peace and our love. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. May all of my joy be a faithful reflection of you. May the earth and the 
sea and the sky join my song Lord Jesus I praise you as long as I journey As long as I live Jesus make me your servant To carry your cross and to share all your burdens and tears For you saved me by giving your body and blood as long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant. I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey. But courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. And with all of the family you saved by your love, we'll sing to your dawn at the end of our journey. Prayers of Intercession Rejoice in the risen life of Christ. Let us pray for the Church, the world, and all who are turning their hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful. We pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. As God's beloved children, let us pray that the light of Christ shine on the nations, the church, and all those in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and with fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid as the coronavirus spreads globally Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us the spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication of all diseases. Malaria, dengue, HIV, AIDS, and others that create suffering and often result in death for many people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus threatens us. Open always beyond timidity and fear that too easily ignore our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. Protect and guard all those who must travel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that speak the truth. Halt the spread of misinformation and act with justice so that all the families may know healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds. And in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for those whom we name in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hold your gentle embrace all those who have died and who will die today. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember all your family, the entire human race, and all your creation. In your love, create, receive our prayers and hopes. God of grace and mercy, we entrust all to whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, light of the nations, salvation of the world, Lord of us all. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray us. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The angels are not sent into our world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name. That falls to you and me and all who are made free. Help us, O Lord, we pray, to do your will today. The Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The angels are not sent into our world of pain To do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name That falls to you and me and all who are made free Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to do your will today